Okay, guys, welcome back to the channel. I wrote to my good friend Borak here two days ago if we could make some sort of year-end uh, uh, review on uranium. So this part will be purely uranium. And uh, I'm glad he said yes, because I have Borak back here with me today. He will go through the uranium charts. Where have we been in 2023? And what to expect in 2024 with regard to the bullish side, but also the bearish side, because we might have some signals now, but I, I'm pretty sure Burak will look into that uh, when he gets uh, gets uh, gets speaking. And uh, yeah, as always, I'm glad you're back. And uh, I guess without any further ado, Burak, uh, just very quickly here for the new people, where can they find you? And uh, yeah, let me, let's uh, see what you have for us today. Thanks, thanks, Casper. Thanks for having me again. Um, uh, I'm at trading channels UK and also uh, on X trading at trading channels. So I think um, sometimes Casper retweets me and all that. So mm -hmm. they've been uh, making these videos since I think last summer. Um, yeah, I think. Yeah. And since then, uranium sector made um, very good progress. But um, I can see, and you can see here, they're all in the red territory today. And some of them may be giving some warning signals, maybe for a correction. And uh, the most obvious one here is uh, the, the, the uranium ETF, uh, Global X Uranium, Eura. So when we last spoke a few, a few weeks back, I was mentioning about the possibility of this red, uh, blue top band causing a reversal. And I was fearing, so as you may be remembering, totally, yeah, totally. If, if this blue top band holds, it could turn into a downtrend, really. I mean, it's unlikely that it's going to come down all the way to a new low, which is at, you know, below four. I doubt it, highly doubt it, but it is giving a signal, at least a warning signal right now. Not only that, this golden uh, uptrend, if we zoom in a little bit, you can see here on the daily chart that this uh, golden uptrend from the lows of, well, April this year. So that was, uh, you know, off the green support. We broke that red resistance, even back tested it, and then later on we climbed. So... From the beginning of 2023, I mean, this year, it's it's been climbing. So it was a good year for uranium. But um, this ETF, obviously, is the biggest ETF out there. And it is sending some warning signals right here because of the uptrend that is being, that is being broken. But not only that, that blue top band, uh, it tried to basically ignore it. Um, but from the lows or sorry, from the highs of 2011. So this downtrend is quite a big one and it looks like it's held its, you know, its top band causing uh, a reversal. So that was a potential resistance when we last spoke, but now it's becoming a real resistance. So um, Ultimately, if it gets to this black bottom band and then we break out, that's, of course, that would be a reason to celebration, for celebration. So we will see if it gets there. And if it gets there, if it holds and we break that blue top band, that will be the end, really, the end of the, the, the this entire bear market. Um, it's already been extremely positive but we still have to take out this hurdle and then we have to take out this green top band as well. I think when, if and when we get there, that green top band may turn into a resistance, maybe for a pullback and then later on break to the upside. Obviously the black, the black one is a potential uptrend with only one touch at its top band. It's right there, the, top, the bottom band is here. That is a projection. That it will it will get to the 2011 highs. Many stocks that I'm going to mention um, today, especially for example the the Cameco, um, it doesn't load. Yeah, it's loading now. So it already, if you can see, this is the biggest uh, uranium miner in the world, um, and you can see it's already it already has reached its 2011 highs. 
So the, the ETF is far from its 2011 high, but the biggest miner in the world, it already recovered the entire Fukushima disaster um, um, damage. So, and what, what caused it? Obviously, that golden top band, the golden bottom band, this is the end of the COVID crash. We rallied, we got back to the golden top band, we back tested it after the breakout. And then we had this really large triangle. I had been watching this and once it broke out, back tested, that was a major bullish signal and it carried all the way to around 46, 47. But now even that one, as you can see here, this red small uptrend, it has, has been broken down. So Cameco would probably is going to come down to this blue bottom band and then we will see more upside going in. So this blue channel inside the red, much bigger uptrend here. So this is the low of COVID in <clears throat> when, well, like two, three years ago. Yes, um, this uptrend is very much intact and I don't think it's going to break anytime soon. That is, you know, this is for me, I we have to hope and ex accept it as a little correction to the blue bottom band and then probably going higher. So I'm going to look at the, <clears throat> excuse me, the um, uh, junior miners, URNJ. So uh, we had this triangle, as you can see, that resistance was broken and back tested. It rallied to new highs, came back down, and it's still going kind of sideways at the moment. This golden support has to hold here for us to keep on going. Uh, do we also have a kind of a bull flag here? Let's have a look. I think we do have a bull flag here. No, this is bad. Right here. Okay, so this looks like a nice bull flag here. All right. Uh, put this in another color to make a distinction. So if we if it holds here, which it, it is at the at the moment, yes, it's holding. As long as this stays intact and we break out of the red bull flag, then I think the junior miners are going to be fine. But if if that golden support breaks, I think the next support would be this blue one. It's not blue yet. <laughs> it's this blue. So I'm going to put two touches here, two touches there. So it would it would come down to this blue and then hopefully it would still keep on running. Um, but of course, if it comes down and breaks the blue, that would be not very good. So we always we always try to react to prices. Well, this is no prophecy. Obviously, there is a support here. And if it breaks, that's already a warning. And if it breaks the blue and red supports, that is a reason to be a little bit more yeah, panicky. Because then I think if this blue support breaks, the correction will deepen. URJ uh, is the UR energy. And um, um, let's have a look at the weekly first. Yeah, that's the COVID crash low right here. Then the green resistance was broken and you can see it rocketed higher. It cleared this golden resistance zone from 2007, 2018, 19. And then we broke it, back tested several times. And then for the final one was in uh, the beginning of this year. Then it broke that green resistance and it kept on pushing. But now this blue uptrend is kind of broken. So is it going to, I'm going to put this in red. Is it going to come down to that red bottom band and then rally? That's the question. If it holds, I think it's going to continue running after breaking that red red um, top band so obviously this is again a correction warning because this blue uptrend yeah it's i'm gonna put it on the daily to show it a bit more clearly that blue bottom band right it started in march april march we climbed inside this blue and then we bounced off it you can see here quite a few touches on the bottom band so if we look at it this way, right there, okay? One, two, 
three, we broke it, back tested. So that resistance is holding at the moment. Again, this is this is what market is telling me. We, I'm only highlighting it. It's not something that I'm making up. This blue channel is now broken, which means we may get to the red bottom band. And if it holds, we climb back up and break that red top. And hopefully we are not going to come down to that black bottom band or the green. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but of course, the green broken resistance was never even properly back tested. That would be the ultimate low for, for Uran URG. And then from there, it would be another buying opportunity. That would be a double support yeah. if that red bottom band doesn't hold. We talked about UEC as well. One of the very good runners from the lows of COVID. You can see the red giant downtrend. Two touches on the bottom. This was very close touch uh, at the uh, at the low of COVID. We rallied, got to the red top band, and eventually broke it. And it, that was the major <laughs> buy signal. And it didn't look back. It didn't even come back for a back test. It even opened with a gap up. It never looked back. Yeah. And I think the golden uptrend is very much uh, the guidance here. Um, before, before. Um, after bouncing off the golden bottom band, and I was watching this very carefully back then, I said, you know, this green support, the golden bottom band, this is a potential support major. And if we start to rally, we're going to break the red, we're going to break the green and keep on going to new highs. And that's what happened. Um, and we had the blue uptrend now, which is now broken. So it, the blue uptrend as you can see here, again, from the lows of last spring, has been broken, oops, something like this, mm -hmm. right? It's broken, back tested, it may come down a bit. So I would be maybe a little bit more, so this is one of the really strong ones. And I would be uh, careful on the red bottom band. Not careful, but it would be a nice support to start to climb up, keep on climbing up. So this is a steep channel. Usually the steep channels, when they break, they come down a little bit and then they morph into something that is more manageable to, to um, basically reduce the momentum but still uh, form a channel that is uh, a little bit more, let's say, um, from the, how can I say? It's it's more like a, a car climbing up a very steep hill and it <laughs> loses traction, it pulls down a little bit and then it starts climbing up again, yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah. So um, <clears throat> URNM, uh, which is the uh, uranium miners ETF, the SPROT. Uh, let me show you where how we got here. So on the weekly again. Okay. So that golden bottom band was a potential support, the top band, uh, not the very precise top band. So I was hoping that this green bull flag and initially the red bull flag, which is inside the green bull flag. I think that's where when we were speaking, Kaspar, the, our first one, when we had just broken out of this uh, in our first uranium video or before we broke out. I think, I think we were just like three weeks before or something. Oh. Very, very close. We did, it, we did it in August. Yeah. Uh, okay. First video. Yeah. And we were there and I was hoping that we would break that red and green. And we both, you know, it, it they both gave way. So that was, <clears> that's <throat> nice to see. And the target was a new high, and we got there. So what do we have now here is this blue uptrend. OK, so two touches here, two touches there. But you can see here, it's trying to, it's bashing onto it for the fourth time. So is it going to hold here and start climbing? Um, try to break the it tried to break the red bull flag but failed so far if it breaks the blue support i think we will see uh, a bit more deeper correction 
And again, a very similar one, I would be looking into this one here. Okay. It gets there, that black bottom band may come down and then starts climbing again off the black bottom band. As long as this golden uptrend holds, it's still very much um, bullish. So um, on the physical uranium, even though, you know, you can see it's been climbing relentlessly and miners are correcting, but there is no correction on the physical price. So this is already a very, um, how can I say, uh, a very promising uh, chart, in my opinion. So as you can see here, this is the spread physical uranium, and I haven't looked into it as a something like this. Or oh, look at that. So yeah, that it didn't hold at the black top band, but you can you can see the black bottom band three touches. Even uh, sometimes say even in that all that chaos during COVID. Yeah, look at perfect. this one, two, three. This is as good as it gets as a support. And it shot up from there. The price was 626. It's now 27. <laughs> so <clears throat> massive rally. And it didn't even stop at the black top band, which is very good. So unlike Eura, which I mentioned, so this is the 2007 high. I think in the last video we were here and I was hoping that it's not going to hold at the black top band. And as you can see, in the black top band didn't really hold. And even this golden rising resistance is gone. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it gave way. One, two, three, four touches, broke it, back tested. So hopefully this golden support is not going to be broken. Did we, and, uh, yeah. did, did we retest it on the daily? The black top band there i think i did think, right yeah yeah all right so i'm going to put it on the daily yeah so one two three four five broke it back tested it and it went nice. it kept climbing so the obvious target if and when it gets there is going to be the red top band so if this is a is it this is excuse me this is our uptrend it's it is this would be our guidance. So that red top band would be still the target. And then if and when we get there, I would uh, urge some caution for a kind of a pullback at least. Yeah. <clears throat> so this is Euroi, um, the Uranium Royalty Corporation. Yes. Um, this green support is very much intact. Uh, the golden bull flag was broken and the red one was broken. You can see the red one is still getting back tested there. So it's holding as support. Previous resistance becomes a support. That's tech, um, you know textbook technical. And we have this gorgeous three touch resistance. And obviously if and when we get it get there, I think usually the four touch is the one to break. Mm. If we get there, I think that's that will be the the another buy signal on euro to get to new highs beyond six seven and the obvious target would be if we put a parallel to it it would be actually 14. so we are at 265. Okay. I, it has huge upside if it can get out of this consolidation yeah and uh, triple u which is the energy fuels canadian company uh but traded also uh, in the American exchange, we have this green bull flag forming. And we had broken, excuse me, let, let's have a look at the weekly first. That's It has a long history. And this is one of my holdings. Um, again, the, the COVID crash, red bottom band held, massive bounce. And then we broke that golden resistance and back tested it maybe two, three times. Finally, since last summer, <coughs> excuse me, that black resistance and the red one, they are all broken. And we have this blue channel. So the blue bottom band 
is a potential support. As you can see, it makes it a very young channel, blue and green. If they both hold here, I think uh, energy fields is going to shoot up, break out of this green bull flag, and minimum is going to get to the 14, 15 level, which is the red top band from the highs of 2007. That, that would be the minimum target. So I think energy fuels still has a big upside. And even though, you know, the others are looking a little bit shaky, um, I think every, yeah, every company is different. So some of them went up since the COVID crash. Some of them went up 10 times. Some of them went up five times. And Cameco is the winner. And if you can, if if you look at this one, it went from ATP to eight. Actually, it was at its height, it was $11. So from 14. ATP to $11, that is huge. <clears throat> uh, yeah. Isn't so, that, uh, excuse me, is, isn't that also on the daily like a triple support right now? Give or take. You had the red, the uptrend, and then. Yeah. So the red, triple, one, yeah. yeah. The blue one, the green one. Yeah, it's at the moment kind of a double. The mm. red one is a little bit lower. Yeah. But it, yeah, it's it's all contained at the moment. This correction is still contained. Yeah, it's that's a, how it is. Yeah. Mm. Well, it's sideways action. Yeah, for sure. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, if we look at Denison Mines, um, the weekly, again, uh, so this is Denison Mines. Let me look at this. Did we have, yeah, the COVID crash actually went down a little bit, but then it recovered. That green resistance was eventually broken, even though it wasn't really a very clean break. And we went to the green sideways resistance and back tested it many times before it broke out of the blue bull flag. And I think the August, uh, our August video was interesting because we were somewhere here. All there, they were all in their bullish uh, bull flags, and since then they all broke out. So, the, the our guidance here says that it, this stock may still get to the top of the golden top band, which is at 11, 15, 11. It's unthinkable. Yeah, it's kind of like unimaginable how it can get there, but some you know loads of things happened with a lot of stocks since then so it was at 18p at the end of the covid crash and it got to two dollars so that's like 10 times already and i think many of these uranium miners are going to become multi-billion dollar uh, companies from tens of millions nice. at the end of the at the end of the uranium uh bull market not now, but yeah, I think it's it's going to take several years, uh, maybe even decades. So the blue channel is broken. Um, the red channel is very much intact, but you can see again, even this one is a little bit alarming. So I'm going to switch to the daily. That red bottom band is holding. Yeah, one, two, three, and four. But it's kind of like it's consolidating. But if it breaks this red, I think this could slide to that golden bottom band. So again, this one is a little bit worrying as well. FCU, the fish in uranium. Uh, let's have a look at the, yeah. That green resistance was broken. And then green, blue channel was broken. And finally we broke out of this this large, I mean, blue, and then the green one, kind of. I think it's out of this consolidation now. I think this is going to, even if it comes down to the blue, after that, it's going to still climb all the way to five, six dollars to the red top band, <laughs> ultimately. And um, EU is the encore. And we can see the golden bull flags break. I thought the green top band was bro breaking up, which was which would have been really nice. It broke it. I have a holding on this one. I was very happy to see that this green top band was broken, but actually it couldn't follow through. 
and now it's coming back down. So is it going to keep on? Maybe it was like this then, right? Something like this. Then we have to include that in the in the price. And then ultimately, if it comes to the green bottom band, then we should we should be headed higher again. As long as you know, this here is a very orderly bull flag that yeah. was brought into the upside and even got back tested very shortly. So this has at least uh, as a minimum target a new high. That's what bull flags deliver. MGA is looking very good because the blue large bull flag is broken. Okay. And this golden resistance, it attempted to break that golden top band. You can see two touches here. This is 16 low, 2020 COVID low, two touches here, third touch. And we may get a back test eventually. And it's already happened, but we may get another back test on the blue bull flag. This is a very large bull flag, as you can see here. This is from April 2022. And yeah, it's just, you know, this is November 23. So it's quite a large bull flag, broken. And I think this is going to keep on going, especially if it can clear this golden top band for good. And then, yeah, minimum target. I think it could get all the way to that golden top band at eight. So huge upside. If it can get out of this very large multi-year, almost multi-decade consolidation. <clears throat> and uh, there is one here, I saw energy. I don't know who, who asked me. I think I saw in your, you you mentioned about ISO. Yeah, I did a tweet like, I don't know, some days ago, a week, a week yeah. ago, maybe. So I saw that one, like, what is this ISO? And I looked into it. And it looks like a bull flag right now. I mean, there is not much history on the price wise, but this is well, this is an obvious bull flag. Mm -hmm. And once it's cleared, um, yeah, the, the momentum is very high. So this is a flag, post of the flag. Yeah. And then we could actually get to 11, 13, 15, you name it. It looks like a really nice consolidation, a multi-year consolidation here. So that's it really, uh, quite a few stocks we covered. I hope that was <clears throat> helpful. <laughs> yeah, sure. I don't, I don't have spectacular uh, news. I'm a little bit urging caution here yeah. compared to just in August, I was very optimistic and uh, it got delivered. But at the moment I'm urging a little bit caution here. So, but uh, if they drop, I'm gonna buy more, so. It's me just, too. Uh, to me, me, this is a secular bull market. Um, I mean, if you read about the fundamentals, I read a little bit about, but, you know, technicals come before fundamentals all the time. Um, and fundamentals are also out there. You know, China is building 40 nuclear power plants only on its own. So there is no stopping it. No, and also, you know, as you mentioned, the, the uranium stock price has just been on a tear recently, and the miners hasn't actually. Yeah. They, they've done well, but they've underperformed heavily. And I think, you know, right. we might have this correction now, but I, I think over the next few years, I think the miners will actually outperform the spot price and, and do some tremendous uh, things. They usually do that yeah, with the lag. So. It's a very, very interesting industry. I don't know the dynamics. So the spot price, when does it come into their contracts? Yeah, exactly. So that when, you know, maybe they when they renew their long-term contracts with a higher price, then they may they start making much more money uh, because it's a very low cycle, like a long cycle industry. Yeah. Uh, you know, the inventory of uranium doesn't get depleted. It took, since 2011, Fukushima, it took a decade until all that inventory got spent yeah now we have a deficit everybody knows it and that's why the the price is going up yeah i also think i'm, I'm confident that you will see triple digit you know uranium spot price uh without a yeah. doubt during this decade yeah. i mean uh, way into way into three digits uh, depending on on but well we should ultimately we should get higher than 2007 highs yeah that's a, that's... was that was the highest point 
and things are much worse compared to back then you know there is there there weren't uh, many nuclear power plants china india weren't in the game and china with their terrible um um what is it called the air quality in their yeah. cities yeah. they are not going to resolve that with natural gas coal or wind or solar so everybody knows it and even us is kind of waking up to nuclear plant again even germany like <laughs> they're <laughs> saying why did we shut it down yeah 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 i think yeah for this decade as we talked about last time as well i mean fundamentals and technicals looks fantastic we might yes. have a dip here for the next few months maybe depending on how severe it gets by the but yeah it's all uh, i mean nothing goes in a straight line as you usually say so yeah yeah uh I, i'm not i'm not afraid i'm i'm just uh some people get really worried oh yeah you know like some of my members ask me like what where do you think is is two two percent drop three percent drop on this stock mm -hmm. i'm like look at look at the, the day have gone up a thousand percent in three years yeah so what's two percent today not ten percent yeah it doesn't matter yeah, it doesn't, yeah matter, so. it doesn't doesn't mean much um the the big the big picture still looks extremely good mm. yeah and i think with that beautiful statement it, it does really look good but uh let's Cut it there, Borak. Again, thank you for joining me here during the holidays. Um, and uh, we will make a part two now with mm -hmm. commodities very quickly, gold and silver, oil and all that good stuff. So uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, follow Borak on Twitter and uh, on his webpage if you want to get a bit more detailed daily updates. He will definitely do that every single day. I know that. So Borak, thank you very much. And, thank you. Uh, Thanks, Thanks Kaspar, for having me again. Yeah. Uh, it, let's uh, do the other video now. <laughs> it's pure, yeah, and uh, we will see how it goes in in Q one twenty twenty four. So, all right, cool. Okay, guys, have a great one, and we will see you in the next one. Cheers.